I'm Elwin Burlikamp. In this video, I'm going to tell you about a whole series of games that come under the title of Impartial Chess. This is a competitive game between two players. We'll call one player red and the other player blue. They both sit on the same side of the table. In the simplest version of this game, there is only one chess man, a green king. Both players will take turns moving this chess man. A conventional chess king could move one square in any of these eight directions. But our impartial green chess man was afflicted by a diagonal plague, which permanently destroyed his ability to move in five of the original directions. Henceforth, he can move only west or southwest or south. He will eventually end up stuck in the lower left corner of the board. The winner of the game will be whichever player made the last move to get him there. In order to record the game, we've labeled the columns of the board with letters A, B, C. We've labeled the rows with the numbers starting from zero. This choice is intentionally different from conventional chess notation, which labels the rows starting from one. We'll now show a game that was played at the Berkeley Math Circle on April the 6th, 2017. We could have started with a king on any square of the board, but in this particular game, we decided to start the king at location D4. In order to keep track of whose turn is next, the players wore bracelets of their respective colors. Here red makes the first move, from D4 to D3. Blue then moves from D3 to C3. Then red goes to C2. Blue to B2. Red to A2. then blue to A1, and red to A0. It's now blue's turn, but she is unable to move. So the game is over, red has won, and blue has lost. Let's now do a general analysis of the game of the impartial chess king. This game is simpler if the king is on the bottom row. He can then only crawl westward so we'll call him the little baby king, denoted by the lowercase k. If he's already in the corner location, the game is over. The next player has no legal move, so the previous player has won. We'll label such locations with a circle. What about the next square? From here, the next player can win by moving onto the circle. We'll put a check mark on such a location. Continuing from the next location, there is a legal move, but it is not to a winning destination. Since there is no winning move, this location is a circle. The next location is a check mark, and so forth. If you move on to a circle, then you can win. Or if you get to move from a check mark, then you can win by moving on to a circle. From a check mark, the first player can win. But from a circle, the second player can win. A circle is a winning destination, but a losing starting location. A check mark is a winning starting location, but a losing destination. Let's look again at the game of the baby king. At every turn, Neither player ever has any choice. When this game is played with daisies, it's called She Loves Me, She Loves Me Not. The outcome depends only on whether the total number of moves from the starting position to the end of the game is even or odd. Let's next consider what happens if the grown-up king starts on the next row up, just above the bottom row. His only move from this location wins, so it is a check mark. But if he starts one square inward, 
he now has three legal moves. Two of them lose, but one of them wins. Since a good player can win from this location, it is a check mark. In fact, first player can win from any location in this row by playing south or southwest as needed to reach a circle on the bottom row. So what about the next row? Since all locations on the row just below it are check marks, any move south or southwest can be defeated. That leaves only westward moves to consider. And like the bottom row, they alternate between circles and check marks. Then moving upwards, the next row is again all check marks. The row above it alternates, etc. In the game we saw earlier, King began at d4. Red missed his opportunity to play to the circle at c4. Instead, he played to d3. Following the convention of traditional chess commentators, I wrote a question mark above this incorrect move. But Blue responded with another questionable move to c3, rather than to the circle at c2. This is the first game of impartial chess that either of these players had ever played, so it is not surprising that their moves were imperfect. Then Red found the correct move to c2, after which his correct plays won the game. So Blue played from c2, will be 2, which was as good a move as any. Red then moved the king onto the circle at a2. Blue's only possible move was to a1, after which Red made the final move to a0. Blue then had no legal move, so the game was over, and Red won. In general, once Blue has moved the king to a winning destination, there's a very simple strategy by which she can maintain her winning position. Red can move off of the circle in any of the three legal directions. In each case, if Blue responds by continuing on in the same direction, she returns the king back onto another circled square. This reverses Red's attempt to escape from his losing position. Similarly, if Red ever manages to move the king onto a circle, he can reverse any of Blue's attempts to escape. This concludes our current analysis of the lone impartial green king.